Hello everyone. If we talk about voice enabled AI, you have got Microsoft text to speech and speech to text models, which are great but not very natural in the conversation. Then comes the Azure OpenAI real time model and they are fantastic and feels more natural when you are doing the conversation. But the problem with them is that there is not much customization available. And the real magic happens when the voice live API comes. So Microsoft basically took the best of both the worlds from the Azure AI text to speech and speech to text as well as Azure OpenAI real time models. So before this, you would have to piece everything together. You take the audio, run it speech to text, then feed the text into the OpenAI model. Finally, take the output, run it through the text to speech and it works. But it was a bit of a hassle and not very smooth. Now with the voice live API, you connect once and handle everything in one place. So it's simpler. You get to fine tune the things like you use the turn detection, noise suppression, and you can even choose the voice which you want. And there are a lot of different use cases. Maybe you are building a customer service bot that needs to sound more human and handle interruptions. Or maybe you are creating a virtual assistant that can talk naturally and also fetch the data from your own database. You get to customize all that using the voice live API. And when it comes to the voices, you have got around 1500 different voices which are available in Azure text to speech and speech to text, which is Azure AI speech service. And in fact, now with the voice live API, you get to support eight to 10 different models. So now you can pick the one that fits your need and even your budget. So if you need a top notch quality, there is a model for that. If you need a fine tuning that also you can do. And in fact, based on your budget, you can choose the model. There are certain advanced features which are supported. Now you can adjust how the system detect when you are finished speaking, you can tweak the sensitivity. You add a bit of a padding so that when you talk, there is an overlap between the AI talking and you talking at that, that time so that it can hear what you just spoke. You can also turn on the advanced noise suppression and echo cancellation right on the server side. So not on the mic or on your client side, but directly on the server side. So the AI won't get confused if it hear it on voice itself. And if you want to go further, you can even bring the avatars. Azure has text to speech and speech to text avatar that can sync with the Visemes from the voice live API. So Visemes is the output, how your mouth moves and all these outputs are provided and in the form of ID when you use the voice live API. So it directly integrates with the avatar and the lip movement and the gestures, all that can be controlled. So now you can create an application where there is a custom avatar available who can talk to you so that you can hook your users to your application. They can talk like a real time. They are talking to a real time person. You can also integrate with the Azure AI agent service. That means now you don't have to just talk to or do a conversation with the AI. You can also do the tool calling. For example, retrieval augmented generation drag. You can do the file search or pulling the data from the database. In fact, pulling the data from the internet and that too, everything in the real time when the AI will be talking in a natural way. So I've already created a video on the voice live API. So you can check the link of that video in the description of this video itself. But now in this video, I want to go one step further. I want to explain how you can use the Python or the Node.js code into your own application itself. So I will show you a lab demo and explain all the advanced features, how you can integrate in your own code. So I'm logged into Azure portal now. And let's go to Azure AI Foundry and quickly create a new Foundry. Oh, I think this name is already taken. So let's quickly change the name. Let's use Shalender in there. So, so that it becomes unique. Next, next, next. It's running the validation. And once this is done, I'll just create it. So this will create a hub as well as a project. So the deployment has started now. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's done. The deployment is complete now. Let's go to the resource. 
and click on Azure AI Foundry portal. So right now I am in the Azure AI Foundry portal and the first project is the one which we have created. Now we have to go to the playgrounds and go to the speech playground. And in the complete end, you have voice live. I already have created a video on this topic. So you can check the video and where I have explained the different features about the voice live API. But here I want to show you how you can use this voice live API in your own application. So let's click on view code and get the endpoint and the resource key. So this is the only single endpoint and the resource key which you have to use. So now I'll open the VS code where I have created the application. So I'll explain the application, but before that, I want to show you a quick demo. So I'm in the virtual environment right now, which is created here already. So, and it's already activated. So I'll just run the code. Okay, perfect. It has opened a portal. So I have, what I've done is I have used the Python node.js and then created one portal. Now we have to provide the endpoint and the key here and there are different models which are available. So I'll use the one, uh, ignore these three. So these are the only models which are available, which can be used with voice live API. And you can always check here, come back here. And these are the models which are available. And there are a lot of different speech inputs where you can choose which language and and which voice you want to use so all these options are available however because this is a custom application i have just provided few voices and the models to choose from so let's provide the endpoint the api key and start the chat hello hello how can I help you today? Can you tell me about Melbourne City? Absolutely. Melbourne, in Australia, is known for its vibrant culture, diverse food scene, and rich history. It's famous Where is Chapel Street, Street in Melbourne? Chapel Street, in Melbourne, is a bustling hub known for its shopping, dining, and vibrant nightlife. So I just wanted to show you that now using the Voice Live API, I have chosen this model but you can choose another model also. This is the best model right now. Uh, however, OpenAI has released the GPT-40 real time instead of the preview, but it's not available in Azure yet. And once it will be available, you can always drop down and use that one too. So these are the different voices available. You can always change them. I'll show you all these options while explaining the code itself. So this is a working application which is right now created in this code itself. So there are four files. One is the Python file where it's running on 8000 port and using the cross origin uh, resource sharing, as you can see here, and it's running the browser on port 8000. Then comes a very important file, which is voice live client, where all the information about the audio, audio sampling, as you can see sample rates, and the connectivity, how it connects. And the most important is how it's providing the session updates. So when you connect, when you create a WebSocket connection, you provide the session updates. And based on the session updates, the conversation happens, the buffering happens. So all this information is available here. So as you can see, um, there are different options like Azure Semantic VAD, Voice Activity Detection. So right now there is an interruption which is available. However, there are certain features which are available in real-time models and other features which are available in other models. End of utterance detection. However, the other models support that. So based on that, these are the different filters or conditions which are provided, turn detection conditions. And these are the session update. So it provides the session update, how much prefix padding should be there, silence duration, prefix padding is. When you, when you interrupt the AI, at that time, uh, because there is always an overlap. So AI should also listen to the word which you were speaking when there was an overlap. 
so that is the prefix padding so the silence duration means if you're not speaking for 300 milliseconds then ai should start speaking and it should remove the filler words like uh uh like so the words which you use and then then there is an end of address detection this is more semantic detection which is available now in the voice live api which means when you are talking and your sentence is not complete it will understand okay then it will do the semantic mapping and semantic search that okay this sentence is not complete that means the user is still thinking and speaking so based on it 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 responds and there are other advanced features which are available which i'm going to explain you soon so these are the different ways and now because you have to provide the noise cancellation and these are different uh, and there is a browser involved here so you need to uh, disrupt the audio then start another one as you can see when when i did a demo it was working pretty well so i will provide this code in the description of this video itself uh, so there will be a github link and you can test this code into your environment make changes so that you can use it in your application however i want to show you in the python code completely how the things working so there is another code test.py so it's importing the variables based on azure uh, credentials for logging and everything websocket connection it's making and here you have to provide the endpoint api key which i'll do it quickly now so this is the endpoint and now you can just you have to just provide the model so i'll use the gpt 40 you can use the real time nano or uh, phi model itself so api key that is provided perfect now it's just providing the details like it's creating a websocket connection then you can see the turn detection so these are the things which we discussed now there are other things like audio sampling rate it's supported from 16,000 to 24,000 however based on your requirement you can change it sometimes the browser supports 48,000 then you have to compress it bring it to 24,000 and there is a deep noise suppressions echo cancellation that means when ai is talking at that time if the voice is coming from the speaker the mic should not pick that up and there are different custom phrases for example there are certain phrases which you use for your organization or something those are recognized for example your company name or your brand name those uh, those lexicons should be recognized and then you can provide the different uh, names uh, so different voice like uh, girls voice multilingual voice all these can be defined here and you can define the rate or the speed so you want the ai to speak faster or slower you can make the customization now this is yzeem output for the animation where the facial animation is provided so that the lip sync can work so now you define the, your avatar correct character which is available in azure and then when you provide the yzeem id at that time it will integrate and you will have a, a video where it will look like whatever the ai is speaking or the conversation which is happening it's coming and it um, it will feel like it's coming from avatar directly so these are all the settings which are available and you can always go back to azure and check the settings here A response temperature this is how random response it should provide or it should stick to the documentation and before that i wanted to show you one more thing that there is an option of using the agent itself bring my agent so that means ai agent service can be integrated with it and once it's integrated and you can create create a different workflows so now based on the function calling you can have more things to be done like for example internet search or uh, file search rag which you can implement as well as you can create the whole workflow based on the voice itself then proactive engagement if user is not speaking or the first time who should speak so ai will start the conversation and if there is a lot of silence 
automatically AI will make uh, make an engaging conversation. Then speech input, what language? Then there are different. Previously, it was basic server voice activity detection. Now it's semantic so that it understands the whole context. And voice enhancements, noise cam suppression and echo cancellation, I've already explained. You define the phrase list, different voices, their voice temperature, as well as the speaking rate. <clears throat> you can define the different lexicons or any phrase words or something. Provide the URL where it def defined in the file and then it can be used. And now there is an avatar option. Here it's directly integrated because it's it's a live. Um, here it's directly integrated because it's a playground. So it's quite easy. If you click here, apply, it will show you immediately. However, when you are doing a custom application, you have to define all these things and you can choose the system message from here. But if I'll go to my application, let's start this application. Can you talk about the Melbourne city? Of course, Melbourne is Australia's second largest city and is often called the cultural capital of the country. Is it very cold in Melbourne? Melbourne's weather can be unpredictable, but it's not typically very cold. Winters, June to August. Are what is the best time to visit Melbourne? The best time to visit Melbourne is during spring, September to November, or autumn, March to May. The weather is... And have you noticed that we are using the GPT-40 model and it's working perfectly? You will feel like it's, it's working like a real-time model itself because the natural conversation, everything is happening smoothly. There is a lot of improvement which Microsoft has done in the Voice Live API and it feels more natural now. And it's... it's and now um, there were there are multiple there were multiple big players like Wapi retail and this is a kind of a competition for them because now using the voice API as well as the logic app you can have a complete workflow defined using the voice itself for example someone is talking to you and booking a meeting someone is talking and um, then sending emails, checking the information, everything in the real time. So, so the voice live API can be used in a lot of different use cases. So let me quickly change the rate and show you how can we change. So I'll change the rate from 1.0 to 1.5. Let's make it a bit faster. Let's try it now. Can you talk about Melbourne City? Of course, Melbourne is the capital of Victoria, Australia, and is known for its vibrant culture, coffee scene, and stunning architecture. How is the weather of Melbourne? Melbourne's weather is famously unpredictable, often described as four seasons in a day. So now you can see it can you can customize your application. It can speak faster, slower based on your requirement. For example, if you have a use case of English learning or a different language learning uh, application, in that case you can make it. Uh, speak slow and if there are different use cases like where you have to do a customer service where you have to speak fast do it quickly then you can increase the rate itself based on where which you, uh, which application you're using to summarize this video I have explained what is voice live API what are the different use cases what are the different advanced features it provides over the previous models and how can you use it in your environment itself? And that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.